Welcome ladies and gentlemen back to the channel and the subject of today's video is the Antonov A40 flying tank. Now I know when you think of the qualities of a tank, the words lightweight and aerodynamic just jump out to you. I mean, how could this not be the perfect candidate for flight? I mean, think back to the times of Leonardo da Vinci when he was just imagining flying machines and things like that. You know this is what he had in mind for the end result, the conclusion, the peak of human flight. Rocket ships and space travel, the moon landing, none of this even compares to the accomplishment that would be a flying tank. At least this must have been what the Russians were thinking in 1942 when they actually attempted to create a flying tank. Let's explore this a little bit. So here it is, the Antonov A40. I have been getting this comment a lot in the past couple weeks that I should try to recreate this thing. And just looking at it, I'm already seeing some issues. For like tanks obviously are very, very heavy. Like that's, that's kind of their deal. It is an armored vehicle with heavy weaponry. It's got heavy ammunition. It's got heavy armor. Everything about it is heavy. <laughs> So when I try to imagine good candidates for strapping wings on and flying through the air, uh, the tank is the bottom of my list. So this is what I'm gonna be building today. Just based off of this model right here, I'm already seeing some issues. I mean, first of all, it's a tank. Why are the wings strapped to the back of the tank? Isn't there still a ton of weight right out in front of the center of lift? Like, is this thing not just going to nose down like this? I just, I don't see this working aerodynamically, but hey, let's learn a little bit about how this project actually went before I start criticizing it too hard. So according to tanksencyclopedia.com, the Antonov of A40 was a Soviet attempt in 1942 to create a flying tank. Only one prototype was produced. The fact that it got this far, they actually built a prototype, is impressive. So obviously the big appeal to doing this was the ability to be able to drop tanks behind enemy lines from the air. Surprisingly, apparently they've tried other methods that involve strapping tanks to the bottoms of bombers and literally just dropping them like bombs but apparently they would do it from a very, very short height. And as long as the gear of the tank was in neutral, it wouldn't break on impact. See, I, I, I gotta see, I would really wanna see that. I find it hard to believe that a bomber plane could just swoop in, drop a tank close enough to the ground that it could just roll away unscathed. Like there has to be some, da like especially with the tracks, there has to be some damage. But apparently the big issue with this was that uh, the crew had to be dropped separately because <laughs> You wouldn't want to be in a tank that was just dropped onto the ground without a parachute. Something tells me that won't be the most comfortable experience for anybody inside that tank. So the intent was for it to be towed by a larger aircraft through the air and then it would be deployed over the battlefield. And then once it landed, it was designed to actually detach the wings so it could then proceed as just a tank. Just a boring old tank without wings that can't fly. Sorry, this, this last sentence here is funny to me. The tank was lightened for air use by removing its armament, ammunition, its headlights, and leaving a very limited amount of fuel. And according to some sources, its turret was also removed. Well, then what is the point of the tank? It's not even a tank anymore. It's just a hunk of metal. Can you imagine the conversation based around this? All right, guys, think. We got to get our weapons behind enemy lines quicker and more efficiently. Any ideas? Oh, oh, pick me. Pick me. Pick me. Pick Anyone me, pick me, other me, than the flail me, tank guy? Anyone? Me, no. Me, oh, okay. Me, All right. You got it. Yes. Okay. Hear me out. Flying tanks. I'm sorry, what? Flying. You want to take a 30 ton hunk of metal and make it fly? Well, yeah, but we can make it lighter so it flies easier. Okay, but everything that we put on the tank was kind of put there for a reason. So what exactly are we gonna remove? Well, we don't have to remove that much. I was just thinking like maybe some of the armor and the ammo and some of the fuel. And if we really need to, some of the lights and maybe, maybe the gun. The turret might be kind of heavy, so we could remove that too. Okay, let me see if I'm following exactly what you're saying here. Your solution to getting our armored gun behind enemy lines is to remove the armor and the gun and add wings. Well, yeah, 
because it would be too heavy to fly with that stuff. Okay, let's build a prototype. What? Anybody else got any better ideas? The mind flail tank kind of actually works. This might work too, okay? Let's try it. And that's how we got this thing. <laughs> Uh, by the way, this photo apparently is not, if there's no real photos of it actually in flight. This is apparently either a drawing or a model. So there's claims apparently of a first flight, but it's not a very trustworthy story. There only seems to be a single source for this story and there's no confirmation of it. Supposedly they actually got the tank up in the air, but it was too heavy to maintain control for the bomber that was actually towing it. And the bomber had to ditch the tank and the tank was supposedly successfully controlled down to the ground and was able to detach the wings and drive back to base successfully. But like I said, this doesn't seem to be a very reliable story, so take that with a grain of salt. So the fact that the only report of the only test flight is unreliable at best, and the fact that there are no actual pictures of it being tested or even pictures of it in its full scale prototype. All of that makes me question whether or not this thing actually got off the ground at all. So obviously one of the major issues with this was that it was just too heavy to be lifted up by any other bomber. Even according to the one official story, which is probably at least exaggerated to make it look better than whatever actually happened. Uh, even in that story, the bomber could not maintain a stable flight while dragging this thing behind it. So in my recreation, I'm going to simplify things a little bit and actually give power to this this glider itself rather than having it being dragged by a separate object. I'm just going to create a flying tank rather than a gliding tank, but based off of this design. I think that might be a little bit easier, a little bit simpler, especially for the game to handle with just one object instead of two different vehicles. Let's see what we can do. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna have to do, of course, is build a tank. So one thing that Trail Makers does not do well in my experience is uh, tank style steering. So I'm just gonna work around that by having normal steering, but with a tank wheel layout. So it's gonna look a little bit awkward for the steering, but this is gonna be the simplest and most controllable option. I mean, it's not like we're really gonna be on the ground that much anyway, because we're building a flying tank, so. All right, I think I got myself a pretty good tank here. It's got a moving turret. Uh, the turret cannot aim up and down, actually. So there's that aspect of it. But that was just a sacrifice I had to make. I had to remove the up and down mechanism in order to make it lighter and more suitable for a flight. <laughs> okay, fine. You convinced me. I made the cannon aim up and down. Now, are you happy? Okay, now for the fun part. Adding biplane style wings to this thing. Now, man, I keep looking at this design. And I'm like, there's no way this thing wasn't going to be incredibly front heavy. Like, the wings are, like, back here. How... How did they make this thing... Oh, they didn't. That's right. <laughs> it, it failed. All right, so obviously, we're gonna need some detachable blocks because we're gonna have to detach this thing once we land. Okay, so here's my biplane wings. Uh, now I'm trying to add the tail onto this thing. There's not a whole lot of details on its flight control, so I'm assuming on one of the pictures, it looks like the model had a wing bridging the two vertical stabilizers like this. So I'm assuming that that was able to articulate and provide pitch. I don't know, but that's what that's how I'm gonna do it. Okay, here is first prototype, and I guarantee that this thing is not going to work at all. There's no power on this thing yet, so I'm gonna try a glide the way that it was originally intended. And I'm gonna do that by driving off the helipad. Let's see if we can even drive this thing. Oh no, I can't even fit up here. <laughs> okay, don't worry about it. I can just teleport over here, and can we even get off of this thing? Come on. Here we go. All right, and we're flying. Yeah, see, I'm trying to pull up right now. We are so front heavy. I mean, this is kind of working, but I am pitching up as much as I possibly can. Yeah, there's no way. There's no way. I mean, this is on honestly, this is doing better than I was expecting. This is doing a lot better than I was expecting. And if I actually made it to the ground, I could detach the wings. <laughs> that was actually pretty cool. Okay, so how do we fix this? Well, uh, one of the things I could do is try to adjust the center of mass by adding more weight to the back. I'll just put 60 kilograms on the tail here. Now I'm way too heavy to drive on the ground with the wings, but it's not supposed to drive on the ground with the wings. It's supposed to fly with the wings. Here, let's see how it feels now. That's not feeling good. Don't worry, we don't need those pipes. This is fine. 
Whoa, 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 we're a level. We're kind of level. This is kind of crazy. I wasn't expecting that to have that big of an effect. I mean, we still nosedive a lot without pitching up, but like, this isn't terrible. I can, I can kind of see why they put the wings on the back now. I kind of had to do it to avoid the turret. Am I going to be able to land this right now? No way. <laughs> Look at it. We have a flying tank. There we go. And then we fly onto the battlefield. Look at this. That was kind of, we just did it. That was exactly how this thing was supposed to go. But this thing is incapable of taking off yet. Can I destroy my own wings? Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, all right, there's still some more. Mo I, I wanna see this thing. I wanna see this thing in full glory. I want this thing to fly through the air. Now that we've done a historically accurate recreation of how it was intended to land, being an unpowered glider that glides onto the battlefield and then, to, and then sheds its wings, uh, now I'm going to try to power this thing and get it in the air under its own power and try to actually fly around. All right, we got six thrusters on this thing. Let's see if it can fly under its own power. Come on, Antonov A40. Make your inventor proud. He never got to see you in action. Here it goes. It's working. <laughs> Look at the ridiculousness of this sight. It is a tank flying through the air with wings. It actually works really well. This is amazing. See, the problem that they had was um, they decided to have it be pulled by another plane, which means that the engine on that plane had to not only fly itself through the air with the plane that it's attached to, but then also a second aircraft that is made out of tank. See, just take the engine out of the bomber plane, put it on the tank, and then have it just be responsible for its own flight. Imagine being on the battlefield and then seeing this flying overhead. Like, look, this could be a bomber too. Look, I can bomb. I could do some dive bombing just like this. I can even aim the turrets. Like, this is an OP vehicle right here. Once again, we have taken a failed creation of history and turned it into an overwhelming success, achieving what its founders could not achieve. <laughs> I mean, obviously it's a lot easier for me in a video game, but I am still proud of these results. And you know what? We still have the main function of this to try to do here. This thing was designed to be able to land on the ground, shed its wings and continue onto the battlefield behind enemy lines. So let's just say that enemy lines are over by this car ball arena over here, that spawn point outside of it. Let's try to land over there. And then we're gonna shed our wings and try to be a fully functional tank on the ground. All right, I turned the thrust off. We're coming in for a landing. There we go. What wrong button. Shed the wings. Yes. I know I could make it shed into scrap, but I wanted to be more realistic and have it be a physical object after I release it. And you know what? Why don't we use why don't we use our tank to uh, shed it into scrap? We don't want we don't want the enemy uh, hijacking our trade secrets here. We want to destroy the evidence so they can't <laughs> reproduce and reverse engineer our amazing technology, our genius engineering. And now we've got fully functional tank behind enemy lines. They'll never see us coming. Whee! Oh my goodness! The tank's actually good. This tank is actually really good. Tony Hawk's Pro Tanker. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and we're dead. Well, here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the Antonov A40. Thanks for your suggestions on building this ridiculous failure of history. It is no longer a failure. It is now a redemption because this thing's actually kind of amazing. I really, I wish that there was actual photos of this thing in action, but I don't believe it happened. I'm not convinced that this thing ever got in the air. I mean, it's a tank. You can't just slap wings on a tank and expect it to fly. I mean, unless you're playing trail makers, in which case that's exactly what I did. I, just, I slapped wings on a tank and it flew. But keep those uh, suggestions coming. I've been loving this series of recreating real life machines, especially the failures. Some of the successes are cool too, but I love taking a failure and then trying to make it actually work like this thing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys did, you could probably enjoy more of this series in case you missed any of these other videos of recreating real life machines. You can check that out right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman and I'll see you next time. Bye.